Hello guys, it's Martha Mew here and today we have all of Sun and Moon 8's Explosive Impact cards revealed. So Explosive Impact, as you can read on the screen, is um, America going to be released in America and therefore English um, on the 2nd of November as part of Lost Thunder. So it's going alongside Fairy Garden and Thunderclap Spark, which are the um, um, Japanese versions of the, of the name. So this is the biggest part of the set, I'm going to say. The, there seems to be quite a lot to go through. So let us begin. So again, thank you to um, Poker Beach for being awesome and getting these out and everything. It's amazing that they do this. So um, so first we have a Scyther that's a Fury Cutter. So it's basically another option to have as your starter for any Sizzle decks, Sizzle GS decks going around. It's got a nice 80 HP, two colourless energy, Fury Cutter 10 plus damage, put three, three coins and if one of them is heads it does 20 more damage, if two are heads it does 50 more damage, if all three are heads it does 70 more damage. For a basic Pokemon you're probably not going to attack with, if you're forced to that's not too bad. So then we have two little Chikoritas, which both have really cute artwork, one having 60 and one having 70 HP. So the first one here we see it says Synthesis, search your deck for a grass energy, attach it to one of your Pokemon and then shuffle your deck. And Razor Leaf for 20 damage, seems pretty good. The one with bigger HP however has got Mini Drain, does 10 damage and heals 10. Uh, it depends whether you want to set up, whether it's worth doing that attack that grass energy on that Chikorita, who knows, because it's only got, it's, it's got obviously a better attack but less HP. So the Bay Leaf, uh, a Volson Chikorita obviously, for one grass energy, so shoot it, soothing scent, does 20 damage and uh, puts your opponent's active to sleep, and for one grass, two colours, does 50 damage. Probably never going to your attack with that. So then we have the Me Meganium, which has an ability called Early Ripening Herb. Once during your turn before you attack, you can choose one of your basic Pokemon in play. If you have a stage 2 card in your hand that evolves from that Pokemon, put that card onto the basic Pokemon to evolve it. Um, it doesn't say that the basic Pokemon has to have been down for a turn, so I'm presuming you can play the basic Pokemon and evolve it on the same turn, I think? Possibly? So it's slightly better than Rare Candy in, in that instance. But um, you obviously have to get Meganium out first to do it. And its attack isn't even worth playing. It's one grass and three colours energy for 110 damage. It's a little bit poor. But its ability is really cool. Um, so we have Spinarak and Ariados. So the Spinarak probably isn't worth looking at. It looks like it poisons and paralyzes things. Um, oh, and put this card and all the cards attached to it into the Lost Zone. What? You would never do that. <laughs> Why would you do that? Um, especially because, let's see what the area dose does. Two colourless trap thread, 30 damage, drawing your opponent's next turn. When your opponent plays an item or support a card from their hand, prevent all effects of that card done to the defending Pokemon. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm not going to sit and try and think of all the things that I could possibly be affected by and then 70 damage and poisons for three energy not worth it hop it um, so it's just for another hop it and puts it on it onto its bench that one and then the other one just does tackle so probably worth or oh, 30 HP though it's a little bit dangerous mm. <laughs> Skip Plume, Flower Bridge, once during your turn before your attack, you can search your deck for a jump off and switch it with this Pokemon. Okay. Place this Pokemon all cards attached to it into the Lost Zone, then stop your deck. So you might be noticing that the Lost Zone is becoming a much bigger thing. So basically it switches straight out into jump off, which is the next card. Which is pretty crazy. So Lost March. I see. 20 times damage. This attack does 20 damage times the number of your Pokemon in the Lost Zone. Excluding Pokemon Prism Stars, because they obviously go there when you've used them anyway. I see. That's how Skip Plume helps, I guess. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> so then we have a Pineco. Pineco Ink. <laughs> Lol. Um, one. 
Uh, one colourless energy, continuous headbutt, tw we've seen this before, 20 damage, and flip until you get tails, it does 20 times the number of heads. The first GX Pokemon we see is probably one of my favourites, Shockle GX. It's got 170 HP and has an amazing ability called Protective Pot. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's Pokemon with two or less energy attached to them. So basically this is either forcing your opponent to play more energy or it's not taking damage. Or obviously if it comes up against a deck that likes to have more energy then Shuckle's kind of a bit pointless. But it prevents a Zoroark from just hitting it for, with its, its double colourless attack which is its only attack, guys. So, um, yeah, it forces them to have another energy in play for that to hit it. Uh, not to mention it has really mean um, one colourless attack for triple poison. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned and you put three damage counters instead of one on that Pokemon between turns. So it's just cruel, really cruel. If you run a lot of like energy removal in the deck, this this can be the new troll deck. <laughs> easily, easily, easily. So then we have a Heracross. Uh, just 20 damage with tackle and then strength of 130 plus damage. If you have a stage 2 on your bench, this attack does 90 more damage. So uh, yeah, it goes up to 120 for two grass energy if you've got stage twos. It's perfect in like, um, I'm pretty sure I'm thinking about Sceptile here from Fairy Garden. Um, it's being a non-GX attacker. If you've just got a stage two on your bench that can't hit anything because it's a GX and you're hitting something that's got like, says you can't be hit by GX Pokemon, then this Heracross can pretty much just come in and wipe the floor with it. So I, I see value in that. In that. Uh, Celebi, Prism Star, first Prism Star we've seen, so the usual Prism Star rules if you can only have one in your deck, and its uh, attacks are Time Warp, let's do it again, okay, uh, choose any number of your evolved Pokemon in play, and for each of those Pokemon you remove the highest stage evolution card and put it into your hand, um, I don't see the usefulness in that right now, but possibly, um, I don't think it counts as knocking it out, so it might work really well with that jump off, maybe. But um, at the same time, you've kind of gotten rid of your cards to get into jump off at that stage because of the way the the skip loom works. So I don't know. And um, then we have Leech Seed for 20 damage and heal 10. So yeah, maybe maybe it'll become more apparent why that attack is there, but I, at the moment can't see it. <coughs> So we have a Cyndaquil, two Cyndaquils in fact, one with smoke screen does 10 damage. If the defending Pokemon tries to attack you on your opponent's next turn, your opponent flips a coin. If tails, the attack fails. <laughs> Lots of uh, Pokemon are poets and they didn't even know it. Um, <laughs> and the second one basically just does 30 damage for two colours. The Quillava in the set, Hammer in for 30 and Super Chains for 60 and Burning for 3 energy. Typhlosion. So it's got an ability called Burning Energy. Once you're in your turn before you attack, you may choose to treat all energy attached to your Pokemon in play as fire energy until the end of your turn, including cards newly brought into play. Um, hang on. Once you're in your turn before you attack, you may choose to treat all energy cards attached to your Pokemon in play as fire energy. I'm guessing that means like if you've got some other energy in your hand oh, attached to your Pokemon. Basically because um, a lot of fire Pokemon need to discard fire energy I guess. Yeah because it works on the bench. That's pretty cool. I like that. Pretty pretty cool. Um, then for four fire energy Lost Flame does 120 damage and you put two energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon in the Lost Zone. Oh this is painful. That's, I mean, it's kind of fueling things that might now use the Lost Zone because, like I said, it's becoming more of a thing. But, ooh, putting energy in there is a little bit ouchy because, you know, a lot of decks don't run a lot of energy. So, I quite like that. It's got a nice 160 HP as well, which I, I know is should be standard for Stage 2 non-GX Pokemon. But, anyway, so we've got Hound Dower here. 
team hunt draw a card for each of your hound arrow in play so I guess up to four and then flame for ten damage hound doom nasty plot search your deck for a card and put it into your hands then shove your deck we've seen that before on a salazzle I think it was um, then two fire energy operation attack does 50 plus damage if you have more cards in your hand than your opponent this attack does 80 more damage so 130 for two fire energy that's not bad at all not bad at all then we have an entei which looks like it's going to be a hollow card so fire and a colorless attack for 20 damage called fire fang your opponent's active pokemon is now burned not bad considering how burn now works so there's two fire and a colors for eruption which does 80 damage each player discards the top card of their deck and it does 60 more damage for each energy card discarded that's ooh. Ooh, could work, could work. It's a basic, hmm. It does take too far in a colourless to do that attack. It could could take a while to, hmm. Ah, oh, and then we have a Blasephi on GX. I, I hope I'm saying that right. That's how I'm saying it anyway. I feel like this card is a complete and utter letdown and I don't understand why it's a fire type. I, I've never seen it in the actual game, but it seems weird that it's a fire type. It's an Ultra Beast and it has two attacks. I think. Yes, two attacks. Uh, the first one is one fire energy, bursting burner, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned and confused. I mean, that's, you know, ouchy, but um, it doesn't do any damage alongside it. And I guess that's because it's got two attacks. So, <clears throat> mind blown for two fire energy, 50 times damage, you may send any number of fire energy attached to your Pokemon in play to the loss zone. And this attack does 50 damage times the number of cards sent in this way. So I guess that um, works with that Typhlosion, I guess, uh, if you can treat any cards as fire energy. So you can basically... I don't really know what energy you would want to treat as fire energy that isn't already just fire energy. I'm thinking maybe double colourless, but then why would you want to send your double colourless to the Lost Zone? I don't know. But um, that can can actually do a lot of damage. But uh, yes, yeah, sending them to the lost zone, it kind of whittles down your uh, mm, your explosive power with it because obviously you can't get those energy back. So once they're gone, they're gone. And this is why I'm a little bit underwhelmed with it. Okay, so it's it's GX snack is just one fire energy. Discard one of your prize cards. If that card is an energy, attach it to one of your Pokemon. It's fairly okay, but it probably won't be an energy. It does down you a prize card, though. I mean, it discards it rather than puts it to your hand, but you're still technically taking a prize card. So, meh. It has its place, but at the same time, it get it's so getting rid of all of your resources by putting them to the Lost Zone, I feel like it's a bit dangerous. Okay, so then we have a Slowpoke, just puts things to sleep, and a Slowking. Has a water energy attack called Memory Loss. Your opponent reveals their hand, and you can choose one card and put it into the Loss Zone. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. That's pretty nasty, just straight up get rid of that card. Um, so if, if you know that they can win with one card next turn, basically send that card to the Lost Zone if they have it in their hand. Or basically you just see their, their hand. And then it has Psychic uh, for 60 plus damage. This attack does 20 more damage times the number of energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Yeah, pretty good. I've just noticed that Slowpoke... <laughs> at the bottom here they've put poor thing lost its tail <laughs> so then we have a deli bird which is a basic pokemon obviously with happy delivery choose any number of your bench pokemon without any pokemon tool cards attached to them and search your deck for up to that many pokemon tool cards and attach one to the chosen pokemon to each of the chosen pokemon <laughs> then shuffle your that is actually really funny i love it it, it nobody will use it but that's amazing <laughs> A Mantine with an ability called Mantine Surf. If this Pokemon has any energy attached to it, it has no retreat cost. And then Surf for 3 energy does 100 damage. So, Suicune GX next. 
<laughs> it has an ability called Phantom Wind that once during your turn before you attack, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you can shuffle all uh, this card and all cards attached to it into your deck so it runs away. Which, let's face it, we all have the uh, the memory of speaking doing exactly that in the games. Uh, and it's got two attacks, uh, obviously one's being its GX, um, two, both using the same um, energy cost, so two water and one colour, Cure Stream for 120, during your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon's attacks do 20 less damage, three energy for 120, especially since it's two water and the colourless is not amazing. Um, and then its GX attack does 150 damage, so only slightly better, and you switch it with one of your bench Pokemon. And then obviously from the bench you can just go, I scroll back into my deck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't rate Suicune highly. Poor Suicune. Poor, poor Suicune. It's just my favourite of the legendary trio. But gets, you know, hated on in card games. Anyway, for we have a Marini. Uh, spike cannon, 30 times, flip two coins, and 30 times a number of heads. And then we have a Toxapex with a one water energy attack called Poison Sting. Does what it says on the tin, just poison something. Two water energy attack, Venom Fever, 50 times the to 50 times damage. If your opponent's active Pokemon is poisoned, this attack does 50 damage times the number of damage counters on it. Only if it's poisoned, though. Hmm. <laughs> um. <laughs> I like the note here. The lack of water Pokemon in this set is offensive. No for alligator? <laughs> and then they say marinis. Better than like meanies. <laughs> that is true though. The other the other um, Johto starters got love. But no for alligator. So then we have a Chinchow and then a Lantern. The Chinchow just paralyzes stuff and does 20 damage, and then we have Lantern, let's salvage, choose up to 4 item cards in your discard pile, show them to your opponent and then shuffle them into your deck, and signal beam for 50 and confusing your opponent's active. I don't even think it'll be tacked in just for the 4 item cards, just because it's a, it's a knockout at the end of the day and you don't kind of want to be, you need a really powerful ability to want to put that kind of card in, and that's not even ability, it's an attack. Um, so we have a Mareep with an ability called Fluffy Pillow. Once during your turn before you attack, if this Pokemon is your active, you may choose to leave your opponent's active Pokemon asleep. Just choose and then do 20 damage to it with its attack. Um, and then the other Mareep is just a Thundershock for 10 damage. <laughs> active Pokemon is now paralyzed. Lol. <laughs> they are funny. Uh, then we have the Flaffy, does Signal Beam for 40 and Confuses for 2 Lightning Energy. This Ampharos, this Ampharos, <laughs> Invisible Flash, once during your turn before you attack you may put 2 Lightning Energy from your hand into the Lost Zone. If you do, leave your opponent's active Pokemon paralysed. So um, it makes more sense, um, kind of now, when um, you know how much the Lost Zone is being incorporated into the rest of Pokemon now. It's not just a place the Prism Stars go anymore. <laughs> it's an actual place where things kind of matter. Anyway, so its attack, its only attack, is two lightning energy called Split Bomb, and it does 50 times, it does 50 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, it's not too bad. It, for stage two, it's awful, but <laughs> you know. And then we have a Raikou. For, uh, it's got a lightning and a colour attack called Lost Voltage, just 30 damage. If you have any lightning energy in the Lost Zone, it does 19 more. So absolutely works with that Amphrase. If you put two lightning energy from your hand into the Lost Zone, then it powers up the Raikou. Uh, this does say any energy, but you know. Oh, you may put two. So if you only have one energy in hand, you can probably, because you can't reveal your hand to your opponent to do that, so you can probably get away with just doing one. Um, or uh, actually no, because it's reliant on doing that to paralyze yeah probably you probably need to okay I take it back I take it back but anyway yeah that Raikou then we have a Natu for 40 HP lost March it does 20 damage times the number of Pokemon in your lost zone we've seen this before <laughs> Night it's March. it's night march all over again. I was thinking that before by the way guys it's it's exactly what that other card did as well. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, they've made a note on here as well. Oh, here we go. I knew it would come back in some form. Well, we all saw it coming. It was too much of a big thing. Uh, yeah, so we've got an R2 again. It says, yeah. And you know the bad thing about this R2? Is it can have 10, it can have taken 10 damage and you can attach a hustle belt to it and then that's going to do a hell of a lot more because it's got 40 HP. So it can afford to have some damage to take it down to 30 for the hustle belt to work. Let's all think about that guys. <laughs> anyway, so Zartu, because it does evolve, um, has energy gaze, does 30 plus damage. If you're uh, 30 plus damage, your opponent reveals their hand. If they have any energy cards in their hand, it does 60 more damage. Yeah. And then psychic sphere for 80. So we have this Espeon, which is the better of the two. Because there's an Umbreon, obviously, as well, they always come in pairs. <laughs> um, I guess because of all the energy ramp that we're going to be seeing. Um, hint hint I will show the card later we all know what it is I'm betting um, so it has a law for, for one colour just to draw three cards and then one psychic energy energy cross this is better because it's just one psychic energy just to do all this 20 damage and it does 20 more damage times the amount of energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon so if they're an energy ramp deck this is going to be doing a lot of damage it's only got 90 hp but it only takes one energy to do and you can just bam surprise that attack with it with um, energy evolution ev and just go you've got a lot of energy on your board there shame if i was to use it anyway so we have unknown with an ability just called damage <laughs> once during your turn before you attack if this pokemon is your active pokemon and your benched pokemon have a combined total of at least 66 damage counter on them you may choose to win the game what <laughs> what i that's a really quirky thing and i don't think you can possibly do that that would mean 66 damage counters does that mean 660 damage? Or literally 66 damage? Um, yeah, I don't quite understand, but um, it's pretty weird. I would think it's 660 damage, which, whoo, yeah, you deserve to win the game if you've taken that much damage. <laughs> anyway, there's another unknown that says hand. Once during your turn before you attack, if this Pokemon is your active Pokemon and you have at least 35 cards in your hand, you may choose to win the game. These are hilarious. <laughs> I love it. I, by the way, guys, I hadn't read these cards before. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, they've made it. They've made it note here. Oh my Arceus, these are the most creative cards ever. Sounds like joke cards I'd make. This is amazing. What's the other one? Missing. Once you're in the turn before you attack, if this Pokemon is your active Pokemon and your opponent has at least 12 supporter cards in their lost zone, <laughs> you may choose to win the game. I absolutely love them. <laughs> That is amazing. I I, I, I think my favourite one is if you have at least 35 cards in your hand. At <laughs> what stage would you have more than half your deck in your hand? That's crazy. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, Wobbuffet. It's got 110 HP with an ability called Shield Tail. As long as this Pokemon is on your bench, each player's Prism Star Pokemon can't attack and has no abilities. What? <laughs> what? Well, that shuts down a lot of things. I feel like people will run this as a tech. Absolutely will. It shuts down Diancy, so Boswell won't hit him hard. Yep, it shuts down Diancy. It shuts down a certain psychic, re a psychic recharge deck I can think of that uses Lunala Prism. Wow. And anyway, yes, it does 30 damage and if you flip a heads, it does 30 more. So it's not there for its attack, I can tell you that much. That's crazy. That would definitely, that's going to be teched. I 
I severely can't think of any reason why that wouldn't be tacked. It'd only be tacked if prisons become more relevant. I, I think they're re relevant enough. Um, and we have a giraffe rig for 90 HP, lost burial. Choose two cards from your opponent's discard pile and put them into your lost zone. Into your lost zone. In, in, into their lost zone. I'm presuming it's into the lost zone, so I'm presuming it's their lost zone. And then three energy, mind shock to savage damage, isn't affected by weakness and resistance. Okay. Ooh, and I hell ago, another ultra beast. Um, Nightcap for one psychic energy. This attack can only be used when your opponent has two prize cards remaining. You choose an attack on one of your opponent's Pokemon in play and use it as this attack. That's interesting. I feel like I might put that in. It's a psychic Pokemon. I have a, an Ultra Beast deck. I'm pretty sure you anybody who uh, regularly watches my videos would know because I was excited about Naganadel when that came out in um, Ultra Prism. I actually can't remember when it came out, but yes. Uh, so, empty tentacles then. Your opponent's after Pokemon is now poisoned and confused. That's a pain in the bum. I think I will tack that card in. That seems like a good Pokemon to put in. So we get a new Poipal and a new Nagamadel as well. Um, so this new Poipal has 70 HP. I can't remember how much the current one has. It might be 60. I don't remember. Um, I open it for one colourless energy. Look at all your face down prize cards and then put them back face down. That's brilliant. Because a lot of things say that you need to have taken a face down prize card to get the effects. Um, I'm presuming you, it doesn't say shuffle them so you can put them back down in any way you like and know what you're going to get. I like that. I do like that. Uh, then 20 damage for 2 energy, which you're never going to use. The first attack you definitely might use. Definitely. Okay, so then this other Naganadel um, has an ability called Charge Up, on which once during your turn before you attack, you can attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to this Pokemon. Woo! Um, okay, so what would, be, what would be the point in that, I'm here you ask? So, 3 colourless energy, turning point, does 80 damage, and if you have exactly 3 prize cards remaining, this attack does 80 more damage. So, 160 for 3 energy. Absolutely not bad, especially if you um, went ahead and used Naganadel's um, Naganadel GX's a GX attack in that game, because you would have exactly 3 prize cards remaining because you reset the prize card count. Oh yeah, interesting. Um, I don't see maybe a one-off in um, the Ultra Beast deck. I don't know why not. Maybe it's a non-GX attacker. <laughs> and Pokemon kind of needs that. Um, yeah. So we have a Sudowoodo. Um, for one fighting energy, hit harder, twenty damage. If this Pokemon was your active Pokemon and it was damaged by an active attack during your opponent's last turn, this attack does eighty more damage. Okay, pretty, you know. Um, by the way, guys, thank you for staying with me for 28 minutes. <laughs> um, you are all amazing. And um, yeah, if you've made it this far into the video, I love you all. Thank you. Well, we shall keep going. So we have a Fampy that has last resort for two energy, 50 damage, flip a coin. If tails, it does nothing. I'm not going to attack with it, in other words. So Donphan has an ability that says Sturdy, does exactly what it says on the tin. It, if it would be knocked out in one go, it isn't, it actually just becomes 10 HP left. Um, and then Rolling Spin for 70 damage. During your, ne uh, during your next turn, this, po this Pokemon's Rolling Spin attack does 70 more damage. I can see this being run in a Hustle Belt deck, because if you don't completely knock it out in one hit, then Hustle Belt then kicks in and it's doing... Uh, 70 plus 70 plus 60 so it's doing 140 it's doing 200 damage with a hustle belt attached that's a lot but it's, it's gonna get one shot back but you know it's there um yeah pretty cool well i mean it can do 200 if it was the next yeah you you get my gist um so hit on top uh, rapid spin for one energy, 30 damage, switch this Pokemon with one of your bench, then your opponent switches their active with one of their bench. Okay. Uh, triple kick for three energy, flip three coins, it does 40 damage times the number of heads. Moving on quickly. Um, we have a 
<laughs> I just noticed it's staring at you into your soul with its demonic eyes. Let's. Oh god, it is. Help! <laughs> Send help! <laughs> um. Anyway. Lavatar has an ability called Submerge. If this Pokemon is on your bench, it takes no damage from attacks. This Lavatar, uh, twice in a row, sorry guys, is the cutest look. It's building Tyranitar and Pupitar in sand. How cute is that? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's cute. Uh, then we have another lava task called Second Strike, 10 plus damage. If your opponent's active Pokemon has three or more damage counters, it does 70 more da- Woo! Woo! Calm down there, Lavatar. You're just a Lavatar. <laughs> you can do 80 damage as a basic? That's... Mendel? Calm down, Lavatar. Ah, <laughs> oh, Pokey Beach. Poo Poo Tar. <laughs> it's Poo Tar, guys. Poo Tar. Um, so it has an ability called Bullet Evolution. When you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may choose to have any damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's attacks reduced by 50 until the opponent's next turn. Why wouldn't you choose that? Why wouldn't you? Um, pretty damn good. And then hammer in for 30 damage. Uh, Tyranitar is a dark type, which is why we're not seeing it right now within the fighting times, guys, by the way. So we have an Alolan Meowth, and it does 10 damage, and if you go second on your first turn, this attack does 60 more damage. Okay, um, it's a free attack, and also a free attack is this Alolan Persian's attack, Bluff, for 90 minus damage. So this attack's damage is reduced by 30 for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Ooh, but it's a free attack, so <laughs> what can you say? And then we see the Umbreon. So for one Dark Energy, Retaliate does 30 damage. If one of your Pokemon was knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack during your opponent's last turn, this attack does 90 more damage. So 120 for one energy. Ouch. Um, and then Dark Cutter for 60 damage for two energy. So here's a Tyranitar. Uh, it has 250 HP, which is on par with a lot of the other Stage 2s. Uh, it has an ability called Lost Out. If your opponent's Pokemon is knocked out by damage from this Pokemon's attack, so put that Pokemon and all cards attached to it into the loss zone. So yes. Uh, rescue structure bye bye. Uh, energy retrieval bye bye. All of that is gone, you can't get it back. Uh, yet. That we haven't seen any cards that can get anything out of the loss zone. So, and I'm hoping there never will be because it's kind of a big deal. Um, so its attack is two dark and one colourless. Vicious sand Sandstorm does 130 damage. This attack does 30 damage to each of your opponent's benched basic Pokemon. Um, which, if they're basics, then that's probably really good because a lot of them don't have much HP. So it starts doing like a little bit of damage just to soften them up. Just to soften them up. Um, I, I really like that, especially that is enough damage to say that the ability actually matters. Um, he doesn't need to do the first strike to kill, to, to, you know, just soften them up a little bit. Then you can just come in with this and take the damage and then all those cards go to the loss zone. So it's GX attack, however. This Smackdown GX does a 220 damage. And this attack's damage isn't affected by any effects on the defending Pokemon. So, including GX attacks that say, oh, this can't be hit during the next turn by GX Pokemon. Oh, yes, it can! Um, and it does a lot of damage given that as well. Uh, I rate Tyranitar GX, it's pretty cool. I like it. Um, so, Fortress, oh, Fortress, I guess. Uh, a Volsum Pineco, which I believe was a grass type Pokemon. Um, one Metal Energy, Spike Thrust, Flip. Th <laughs> I'm sorry. Flip three coins. This attack does 10 damage to your, each of your opponent's Pokemon times in a row of heads. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Two metal and one colourless lost bomber. 190 damage and put all cards... They put this Pokemon and all cards attached to it into the lost zone. Oh, the lost zone is coming back with a vengeance. Okay. It, so it, it does a lot of damage and then just basically kills itself. It do, Well, it doesn't... It doesn't... It doesn't KO itself, so... You know. 
Um, at least I don't think that's counted as KOing itself because it just moves out of where it is. Anyway, so we have a Sizzle uh, that's got 120 HP. It's got an ab ability called Exoskeleton and it takes 30 less damage from attacks. It doesn't matter who from or where from, it just takes 30 less damage from attacks. So I'm presuming that works on the bench. Anyway, so it's got one uh, one attack with one metal and one colorless energy or special blow. 60 damage and if your opponent's active Pokemon has any special energy attached to it, it does 70 more. Whoo! 130 damage with two energy and a lot of a lot of um, decks use special energy. Uh, there's only a couple that don't, so that's hitting pretty hard. So we have an Amaral and an Azumarill. The Amaral isn't anything to write home about. The Azumarill um, has a one fairy energy attack called Droplet Search. You look at the top eight cards of your deck, choose any number of energy cards you find there and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. Then shuffle the remaining cards back into your deck. So if you run a very energy heavy deck, that is amazing. Um, it, if, it's basically a max elixir on crack. It's just a max elixir gone absolutely nuts. Um, <laughs> so yeah, because it, it checks slightly more cards than max elixir as well. Um, it's got 100 HP, so it's a, it's a little bit bulky, but it can still be hit a little bit uh, easily. Um, its second attack is one fairy, two colorless for play rough to 60 damage plus. This flip a coin if heads, it does 30 more. So it's not much of an actual attacker, but it can set up. The only downside for me is that it's a stage one and you have to evolve into it in the first place to do that attack. Um, but otherwise, I like it. So we have a Snubble that's uh, 20 times discard up to two trainer cards from your hand and it does 20 damage times, 20 damage for each card discarded. So 40 at the most, I guess. Um, Gramble. Dead broke for one fairy energy. Uh, 30 damage. If you have no cards in your hand, this attack does 130 more damage. So, um, I'm trying to think of anything that would just get rid of your hand. There really isn't anything. Hmm. <laughs> okay, um, and then Giant Fang for 110. Uh, Chansey, which is a colorless basic Pokemon with 100 HP. Bulky as usual, Chansey. Um, healing Pirouette. Heal 20 damage from each of your Pokemon. And for 3 energy, Kind Slap. I, I don't really know how a slap could ever be kind, but still. 100 damage, and if your opponent's active Pokemon has any damage counters on it, it doesn't do anything. Fun, fun. Um, <laughs> then we have Blissey, which obviously evolves in from Chansey. Uh, with 160 HP for a stage 1. It's pretty big. Uh, blissful Supply. Once you're on your turn before you attack, you may remove one special condition from your active Pokemon. It spe specifies one special condition because there's a lot of Pokemon, if you've noticed in the set, that do like Poison and Confuse and Paralyze and Confuse and lots of things like that, so yeah. So uh, it's also got Powerful Slap for 80 times damage. Flip a coin for each energy attached to this Pokemon, it does 80 times the number of heads. So that can be actually not too bad. Um, I mean, if you get all tails and it does nothing, so I guess. Yeah. Then we get a pointless EV that I'm not even going to look at because I'm annoyed that they're not reprinting any more of ev e ev uh, Energy Evolution EV. It does have cute art, but you know, any artwork is better than any Energy Evolution artwork EV for some reason. <laughs> anyway, Stantler for 110 HP basic Pokemon has one colorless energy called Mystifying Horns, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. Uh, 2 energy attack, enhanced horn, 20 damage, and if this Pokemon has a tool card to attach to it, it does 60 more. So if I, I guess if you got a choice band, it would do 90 more, so it would do 110 damage for 2 energy. Meh. It's a colourless Pokemon. <laughs> um, so we have a Smeargle, perfect lightness, your opponent reveals a hand, choose a supporter card you find that and use it, <laughs> and use its effect as the effect of this attack. Why does why does a Smeagol have to steal Sylveon's effect? It, does anyone remember that Sylveon? I love that Sylveon. I never used it, but it's really funny. <laughs> why not? Um, so Tail Smash for 30 damage, and if Tail does nothing, <laughs> okay, okay, then Smeagol, you can you can be hilarious. So we have a Mill Tank for three energy. It does Milk Cannon. 
You may reveal any number of Moo Moo Milk cards from your hand to your opponent, and it does 60 damage for each card you revealed. So if you've got a handful of four Moo Moo Milks, 240 damage. That's right, right? Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> Strong mill tank. Also revealing that Moo Moo Milk is going to be a card. Yes, it's at the end of here, guys. It's going to be a trainer, obviously. So, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> then we have a Lugia GX with 190 HP, a nice amount of HP for a basic Pokemon. It's obviously a colourless Pokemon. Um, three colourless energy to Psychic for 30 plus damage. This attack does 30 more damage times the amount of energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. It, unfortunately, it, do, it does take three energy to do this. Uh, it's kind of the downside, but it is colourless energy, so a DCE and another energy counts. So I guess it's fine. It also does have another attack that's four colourless energy. I'm not going to try pronouncing this. Well, I am going to try pronouncing this. Wadatsumi Spear. I did it. Wadatsumi Spear. Uh, 170 damage. And this Pokemon can't use Wadatsumi Spear during your next turn. Good, because it does a lot of damage. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think it's a bad Pokemon. And you can attach two DCs to it and do all of its attacks. But um, it's a lot of special energy in one place. <laughs> your choice. Um, and then it's GX attack, Lost Purge GX. I guess this is going to involve the Lost Zone, guys. Um, put your opponent's active Pokemon and all cards attached to it into their Lost Zone. Um, the way I read this, guys, is if they only have one Pokemon and you use this attack, you win the game because they're left with no Pokemon. And it doesn't say there's, there's a Tapu Lele or Feeny card, I can't remember. It's not a GX one that says that you can remove the Pokemon in play or put it to the drop zone or put it back to their hand or something but you can't use it if it's their only Pokemon in play where this you can um, so yes it can win you the game like that yeah this Lugia is not too bad um, it's, it's not the best but it's not the worst so we have a picky, two picky packs um, one doing 10 damage and before doing damage discard all two cards attached to your opponent's active Pokemon I like how it says all because Genesect is going to be a thing. That Genesect. I've forgotten about the Genesect. What made me remember? I don't know. Something. Probably the all. Anyway, um, then the other one. Um, your opponent switches the active one of one of their bench. <laughs> okay, moving on. The Trump Peak, which has an ability called Mountain Ferry. Once during your turn before you attack, if this card is in your hand, you may place it in the Lost Zone. If you do, look at the top card of your opponent's deck, then return it to the top of your opponent's deck. If the card is a supporter card, put it to the Lost Zone instead. It's a shame you can't have endless numbers of Trumbeak <laughs> in a deck to use with that um, unknown. But there you go. It, this is obviously also fueling that lost march because he just goes in there. I think that deck would literally just run for Trumbeak and none of the other stuff. It doesn't need. It just. It just needs to be in your hand and just go to the lost zone. Yeah, why not? So two cannon, heat break, forty damage, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. And then huge cannon for three energy, 160 damage. If this Pokemon evolved during your turn, during your turn, this attack does nothing. Okay, fine. All right, we're on to the trainers. Well, hey, uh, finally, only 43 minutes in, or, or almost 44. Um, this card can only be used by the player going second on their first turn. After that, it's useless. It's called React Hammer. And you discard an energy from one of your opponent's Pokemon in play. Pretty simple effect. But um, uh, yeah, it's not going to be used because nobody goes second. Well, people do go second, obviously, but you don't choose to, so I guess. And I, I, plus, after the fact, that's not going to be used at all. Um, anyway, so we have an Ultra Ball being reprinted, Rare Candies being reprinted, Switches being reprinted, Pokemon Catchers being reprinted. I don't need to read what all these do, we all have seen them a lot. So here's this Moo Moo Milk. You choose one of your Pokemon, flip two coins, and for each head you heal 30 damage from that Pokemon. 
Um, and it can also be an insanely strong tool with that mill tank if you manage to get all four of them in your hand because it doesn't discard them, just this mill tank can just go nuts every turn. Anyway, so we have Lost Mixer. Put two cards from your hand into the Lost Zone, then draw one card from your deck. If you can't put two cards from your hand in the Lost Zone, this card can't be played. This... I, I can... The Lost March is going to be a deck. I can see it now. You run four of that Trumbeak and just discard them into the Lost Zone. You run four of this Lost Mixer and just put any, any two Pokemon into the Lost Zone and just go nuts. Um, yeah, and not to mention that if you've got a handful of Pokemon, you can just use as many of these as you like to put multiples of those Pokemon into there. It doesn't, from what I remember, it didn't rely on there being Pokemon with that attack in there like, like Night March did. It just relied on Pokemon being in there. So, yeah, it's going to be crazy. Uh, looks like Choice Band's getting another reprint. Then we have Choice Helmet. The first thing I did was say Choice Helmet. I wonder if that does exactly the opposite of Choice Band. What do you know? It does. This Pokemon, the the tool card is attached to, takes 30 less damage from your attacks from your opponent's Pokemon GX and EX. Well, who'd have guessed? Um, so we have a lo another fairy charm so we saw a couple in fairy rise but this one is for grass so prevent all damage done to the fairy pokemon this card is attached to by your opponent's grass pokemon gx and ex cool i wonder when they'll stop phasing out the pokemon ex thing i don't know it may be not for a long while because um expanded, expanded is still obviously a thing so we have whitney which you can use with your mill tank yeah. <laughs> I couldn't realise by the fact that it was called Whitney. <laughs> draw one card and draw an additional two cards for each Whitney in your discard pile. <laughs> I couldn't get my head around this card to start with. I was just a bit like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's fair enough. And Professor Elm's lecture. This is going to be the new Bridget, but it's kind of a little bit less powerful because it can only find Pokemon with 60 HP or less. So it says, search your deck for up to three Pokemon with 60 HP or less, reveal them and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. So you can use, kind of use this in two ways. You can use this to find three Pokemon um, just with 60 HP or less to throw away with that... Um, what was it called? Lost Mixer. So that your Knight to your Lost March Pokemon do more damage, I guess. Or you can just, you know, six, three Pokemon with 60 HP or less and then just put them onto the bench. Because, yes, it goes into your hand, so you can choose to do whatever you wish with them. Um, I like how it shows a Feraligatr in that picture, but then there's no Feraligatr. Not, well, no Totodile. It's a to Totodile, I'm sorry. I'm going way ahead of myself. But then there's no Totodile or Feraligatr in the set. Nice. So then we have Faber. Choose one of your opponent's tool cards, special energy cards, or stadium cards in play and put them to the lost zone. Okay. Um, my issue with that is that it says or and it's a supporter. Um, it can't get rid of um, prison stadiums because they are un unaffected by supporters. Um, special energy cards and Pokemon tool cards can be discarded with Field Blower and you can do one and the other not all this only targets one so it's a little bit less powerful if you ask me i mean i mean there's no current way that i can remember to get um pokemon tool cards from the discard pile back into your hand unless you're using that attack from that pokemon we saw earlier but i don't think people will be using that so i don't think fab is going to be um you know factored in at all how got a reprint? Lily got a reprint. Why? I don't know, but they did. Um, <laughs> Lusamine Prism Star. Guess what this does, guys? It's Lusamine. I wonder if it's to do with Ultra Beasts. Well, let's see. You can only play this card if your opponent has three prize cards remaining. Hint, hint, you must be using the Ganadel. Um, <laughs> prevent all damage done to your Ultra Beast by your opponent's attack during your opponent's next turn. Whew! Okay then, um, unless of course you're Tyranitar and using your GX attack and then it doesn't care because it ignores all the effects. Wahey! 
Um, yeah, yeah, I quite like that Luke Singing Prison Star. It's pretty funky. Um, it's a one-off because it's a Prison Star anyway, so why the heck not? It can potentially prevent you from losing the game. Uh, so we have, talking of Prison Star Stadiums, um, we have a Prison Star Stadium. Um, once during your turn, before you attack, you may discard a fire energy from your hand, and if you do, draw three cards. It's Scorched Earth, but ramped up like hell. I mean, it kind of has to be, because you can only run one of this card in your deck, and if the opponent replaces this card, it's gone! <laughs> you, can't, you can't do it again. Um, yeah, which is the only way of... Um, doing getting rid of this card because uh, yeah like it says on here whenever a player uses an item or supporter card from their hand prevent all effects of those cards down to the stadium so the only way you can get rid of this is a pokemon attack effect or them playing another stadium basically okay so then we have a reprint of double colorless energy it provides two chicken nuggets yeah um and memory energy which is a brand new energy we haven't seen uh, before that I can recall. We had a stadium that kind of did this. It provides colourless energy, obviously. One colourless energy, which is actually pretty handy in some cases. Um, the Pokemon this card is attached to can use the attacks of its previous evolutions. It still needs the nece necessary energy to perform the attack though. Um, I quite like it. It's pretty funky. Um, I can't immediately think of a... Um, use for that. Actually I can. That Lost March deck. <laughs> yeah, evolve into a more bulky Pokemon and then use Lost March because you have memory energy attached to it. Wow. That if that doesn't make meta, I don't know what will. <laughs> I really don't know what will. Considering how big Night March is, I would be surprised if it didn't. Anyway, so guys I do actually have slightly more to show you. I think I think all the cards from that actually were covered in here so I can get rid of that and just go over to this page. You see it all right here guys. So um, Pokemon Worlds is currently happening. Um, if you want to go and watch their stream, I do recommend it. It's always awesome watching the Pokemon streams, uh, Pokemon TCC streams. They are always exceptionally informative, always tell you what's going on as it happens and their display is amazing. Uh, uh, I'm definitely not paid to say any of this. I, I honestly think Pokemon TCG streams in general are really, really well done. Um, and anyway, this um, mechanic and this card were revealed at the current Pokemon Worlds. So um, it's a new GX mechanic, as it says on Poker Beach here, called Tag Team Pokemon GX. So, um, like it says, I'll read the bottom bit here first for you. So, a Tag Team Pokemon GX will feature two Pokemon of the same typing joining forces on one card. They will have higher HP and stronger attacks than usual, so you'll have to forfeit three prize cards if yours is knocked out. So, it has um, its sort of balance to having this overpowered effect. Uh, in that your opponent will take another one more prize card for taking it out. Um, yeah, <laughs> pretty big uh, advantage there, because then you only kind of need to knock out two of these tag team Pokemon to win the whole game. Um, anyway, the yeah, one out, <laughs> the one above, which was this one here we're going to see in a minute, um, features a new mechanic in the energy cost of the GX attack with a plus sign, which means its GX attack can have a secondary effect if you have additional energy attached. It's unknown if this will be unique to the feature to the GX attacks of the tag team Pokemon, or if this is a new thing coming to other cards as well. The plus sign lets players easily see that the attack has a massive secondary effect if more energy cards are attached. In the case of this Pikachu and Zekron, we'll see that in a minute. Tag Team Pokemon GX have a slightly updated card design when, it co when compared to GX cards, featuring the two yellow corners and a Tag Team logo in the top left corner of the artwork, which we can see here. The two um, corner bits down here and then Tag Team there. Um, and this is the first time since the legend cards in um, Heart Silver HS. 
I know it's Heart Gold Soul Silver, but I don't know. Triumphant, that's a Pokemon card in a set that features more than one Pokemon. However, unlike the Legend cards, these cards aren't split into two different cards and can feature non-legendary Pokemon. Cards with the multiple Pokemon in it seem to have recently been featured on promos in premium collections, such as the Forces of Nature GX premium collection, which had um, Raikou, Entei, and Suicune on it. No. No, it had Thunderous, Tornadus, and um, the other one. Landorus, that's it, <laughs> on it. Um, however, they have all been Jimmicky Jumbo cards and therefore aren't legal for tournaments. Anyway, so Pikachu and Zekrom GX are cards number 33 out of 181, which means our English set in February, which is going to be the set after the one I've been talking about today, Explosive Impact is going into the set that's coming out in November, so this is the one after that, um, we'll have 181 cards and that's minus the, uh, that. well that's not including the uh, secret rares, so it's going to be close to over, well it's going to be over 200 cards including the secret rares and full arts and all that stuff. Um, so, so yeah, despite the release of Let's Go in November and the focus on Kanto Pokemon, it seems the TCG will still feature Pokemon from other regions in its first Let's Go era set. Oh yes, cause, because Let's Go is coming out in November, um, technically this would be the first, um, it's coming out slightly, slightly after our Lost Thunder is coming out, which was the, as we've actually just gone through all those cards, that's the cards that those are coming out in. Um, anyway, so let's actually have a look at this card now. So, it's got 240 HP for a basic Pokemon, which is um, obviously one of the big things about this. Uh, they're saying that's, the, that's why you take three prize cards when you knock it out. Um, but, um, yeah, three lightning energy attack does full blitz for 150 damage, and you search your deck for three lightning energy cards and attach them to one of your Pokemon, then shuffle your deck. Highly recommend attaching it to this Pokemon if you think you can survive. Because its GX attack then does 3 Lightning Energy plus Tag Bolt GX. 200 damage. If this Pokemon has at least 3 extra Lightning Energy attached to it, uh, it obviously says in, in addition to this uh, attack's cost, this attack does 170 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon as well craziness craziness um a lot of g some of some gx pokemon have 170 hp that this can just wipe it off the map um given that if your opponent's active pokemon it's also a gx you are taking four prize cards for that attack and if you are lucky enough to be against one of your opponents um tag team cards you will take five prize cards because you're taking three for the tag team and then two for the bench gx pokemon it's crazy, you've only got one prize card left to take, and that's, yeah, so no wonder the downside is that your opponent takes three prize cards for this, because it is pretty damn, it's hard, it's really hard, so, yeah, anyway guys, that's all I wanted to go through today, thank you very much for sitting with me for almost an hour, um, I have covered a lot, and I hope you guys appreciate um, that I do cover it all, um, and don't just like wipe through all the cards it just gives them all a fair viewing i think because a lot of cards can just sort of be overlooked anyway thank you guys for watching i hope to see you next time please um <laughs> anyway have a lovely weekend bye bye